Hi, and welcome to another episode of Girl Chat. I'm Kat, the Hormone Fairy, and today I am joined by my good friend, Lucy. Lucy Howe. Lucy is a breast cancer thriver and a health coach and owner of Health Health. Hi, right, so welcome, Lucy. Thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. I wanted to bring you on because I have so many women message me on Instagram or through my website asking about menopause after cancer treatments and that's not my speciality the cancer the oncology side of things so I thought who better than to bring along a thriver a lady that's been through it all that's come out the other side to let us know exactly what happened so what happened you had breast cancer and then you had treatment is that right I did yes I had chemotherapy uh, a process called FECT, so it's quite a harsh, harsh regime one, um, and that uh, puts you straight into uh, menopause. You don't ease in slowly with perimenopause. You don't ease in, so you go from being a semi-normal human being to a complete lunatic, psychopath overnight. Um, you know, I, I didn't even know that I'd gone into menopause because it goes in that quick. And uh, for three weeks, I was, I was just a complete different person I was anxious I was crying I mean I dealt with my cancer I was on the journey I was absolutely fine with it and then all of a sudden you know my partner would come home and find me lying on the kitchen floor crying my eyes out and he was like what, what's the matter I don't know well, See, that's we interesting so I was like that in 39 that's that was my symptoms perimenopause but you've been thrown straight into it did now this is what I hear from a lot of women that oncologists doctors do not prepare women for this so were you told anything not at all no I had no idea um that that could happen you they give you a list of side effects and things that could happen but I don't remember menopause being on there and I don't remember it they, they never ever stressed it would be that quickly that badly and that shocking okay yeah so the emotional side was that the biggest symptoms for you what so you uh, said about big, crying yeah. for no reason the, the biggest thing was the anxiety, the lack of confidence. And, you know, you've known me for years. I'm a very strong person. I'm a very confident person. Uh, I, I'll deal with stuff head on. Uh, you know, I was dealing with cancer head on. I, you know, totally got my head around that. And then all of a sudden I'm crying for no reason, literally crying for no reason. I was scared. I was anxious. Just, I mean, just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And it wasn't just a little bit. It's a lot. And then did you have the other physical hot flashes night sweats or weight gain uh lots of weight gain unfortunately that's the steroids as well um <laughs> yeah you go from having a some normal face to moon face overnight uh, luckily that's all out my system now uh but yes the medication i'm still on is i am battling weight gain as well as well as you know the menopause symptoms hot flushes definitely you you learn to change your clothing there's no no shiny material ever again okay <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah what about um doctor's advice with menopause because you know you've been through breast cancer so hrt not an option not for my cancer right. because it was i had um hormone it was hormone prominent and Pro, uh, protein prominent I had it, I had it both ways but because it was uh, scored high on uh, hormonal cancer um, my oncologist will never let me have HRT even though my GP wants me on it uh, my oncologist won't let me have it on anything so just a few tips how have you coped I know you're very much into natural medicine gut health anyway but what have you been doing the last few years Okay, so all through, all through the journey, when I agreed to have chemo, because I didn't agree at first, and then you have to chat to your oncologist, she told me all my stats, my, my chances of survival with or without. And I took responsibility, which you have to do with your body anyway. So I, I cut, you know, change your clothing. I, I will never wear a thick jumper ever again or any shiny material whatsoever. Um, all cotton and linen for me. Um, I limit the amount of alcohol I have. Or if I have a hot flush when I've had alcohol, I know what that cause is. So I don't go mad anymore. Uh, you've got to cut out the chilies as well. There, there's a lot of lifestyle, but I took a lot of supplements 
as well as changing my diet. Um, I cut out a lot of the things that I've been eating for years, which obviously were detrimental to my body, uh, which was meat and alcohol and bread and, and all the lovely stuff that everyone loves. So it was a case of really reassessing my diet, which I yeah. thought was good which actually wasn't as good as it could have been. So it's an abundance of fruit and vegetables, eating the rainbow as much as you can, uh, up, up in my water intake, which was quite good anyway, but I did yeah. make sure I was on point on that. Um, exercise, fresh air, uh, motivation, mindset work, uh, and a lot of supplements to bridge the gap in, in where yeah. it was missing nutrition over here. So, you know, I had a, a fabulous product that I took because it helped my heart because some of the chemo could damage my heart. So I took a, a, a very good L-arginine product uh, to protect my heart. Um, it also gave me a lot of vitamin C um, and a, a vitamin B, which you need to keep you happy. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's all about balancing the hormones yeah. whilst you're going through chemo therapy yeah and just whilst we're on the heart subject that's so important i don't think heart disease is the biggest killer yeah especially post-menopause women because the estrogen is so protective for our heart for our arteries and when the estrogen starts to plummet then that can cause issues so looking after the heart taking a product exactly is so yeah. important yeah. so going sort of forward the medication after your chemotherapy you said you're on medication Yep. So I had radiotherapy, then I had injections, uh, and then I'm now on tablets uh, to moxifen for 10 years. Okay. Uh, it used to be five years. The doctors now advise you to stay on it for 10 years. And with that uh, comes a lot of other delights. <laughs> let's, let's discuss these delights. What else? Just the delights of the ongoing uh, gift that cancer is just keeps on giving. Um, so I have uh, I had terrible, terrible vaginal atrophy or atrophy, however you pronounce yeah. it. Um, so much because it makes the lining of the vagina very thin. I actually tore and it took nine months to repair the tear. Um, so I have a very patient fiance. <laughs> bless him uh but you, you're not told that you know you're no, not because that's not. naturally your vagina the walls of the vagina and the uterus they all become you know yeah yeah higher, they become thinner absolutely yeah. i mean some people breeze through tamoxifen some don't uh it's given me the weight gain um and it i still do get the hot flushes uh, with it um that's the only and, and the vaginal the vaginal problems as well um what else has it given me oh gosh uh the anxiety I've got on top of now uh, a lot of mindset work and I, I'm very careful that I live every day as a happy day um but yeah it's and also unfortunately that this one of the side effects of tamoxifen could and it's a very small risk I do have to announce that it could be uh, endometrial cancer because it thickens the lining of the endometrium. Um, and unfortunately for me, last year it gave me, I got a, a very big polyp, uh, an enormous polyp, but because of the, the vaginal dryness, they couldn't uh, take a biopsy. I, I had to go in under sedation and have that done. Um, and uh, it's grown back a little bit again this year, not as bad as last year, because I started bleeding again. That's how I found out oh, that. Okay. You know, th this is what happened. I, I suddenly had so your period a, stopped straight after, after the chemo. Yeah. And now yeah. again, and bleeding came back. Started. I've heard that with yeah. another. I've heard it with another cancer thriver that she said. I think it was five years after her cancer treatment, yeah. she started bleeding again, yeah. and it yeah. was like she was she going through menopause again naturally. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's I'm now going through menopause again naturally. Um, At least you know what to expect. <laughs> exactly. I enjoyed it so much the first time around. I thought I'd do it all over again. <laughs> It's not as bad this time. I mean, there is no anxiety. Uh, there is it, there's uh, a couple of hot flushes, but very rare. I'm very, very on point with my diet at the moment. I'm looking after my gut health. And, and, and the I think, you know, I feel so confident now and I feel, you know, the mental clarity is amazing. And I, I actually didn't think I'd ever feel like this again. But you do have to work hard on your menopause journey um, combined with your cancer journey to get the balance right. Uh, yeah. Because the, the, the 
natural menopause or the chemo menopause will tip you out of balance and it's up to us to tip it back again. Yeah. Okay. Just quickly, I seem to recall when we talk about vagina, vagina dryness and vagina atrophy, you did have a treatment for that recently, didn't you? Yes, I did. The Mona Lisa touch. That was it. Yes, I did do that. Um, it did get it did improve it. Um, it doesn't work for everyone. No. It is expensive. Um, and I, I did do it and it worked and it was great. But because I'm on tamoxifen, I would always have to have top ups every six months. And uh, it, it, six months was a bit too long between treatments. Yeah. If I'd have had it again, but I just be honest I'd had enough when you've been on the cancer journey you get fed up with being prodded and poked about I mean even my dentist wonders why I don't come and see him more than once a year and I, I'm just fed up with being prodded and poked yeah. about um I haven't got toothache and he's he's accepting of that so I didn't really want any more of that if I wasn't on tamoxifen then and I still have this problem then I would consider doing it again definitely so advice for women going through breast cancer treatment with regards to understanding what might happen with the menopause what would your advice be to those ladies that are watching this speak to your oncologist make sure you have a really good relationship with your oncologist if you're not happy with him or her change because this is your body and your journey uh don't get on the fear the, the hamster wheel of fear that that unfortunately nhs gives us because they're so busy they can't give you the information they just chuck the uh tablets at you they you know chuck the treatments at you and tell you to get on with it but there's a lot of support lacking i mean modern medicine i wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the nhs yeah. absolutely modern medicine has, has kept me alive but i also worked hard around that with my nutrition and my mindset and gentle exercise fresh air um there isn't the support in the nhs i'd love to get in there and and, and get there i'm trying yeah. um, you need to reach out to people like me um I'm resurrecting my cancer support group now because I think it's needed again. Um, people had too much to cope with over the last couple of years okay. uh, with the thing. <laughs> so I'm cancer support. Is that a Facebook group? Uh, yes, it's called. It's uh, because I'm not a very sensible person. It is called Cancer Kiss Our Ass. Okay. So yeah. I will. I will send you the link. Positive. Uh, yeah. Positive. Yeah. You know, kiss my ass. Yeah. Um, because you you have to you, this is a journey and you have to make it as fun and and as as happy as possible um, because otherwise it's a very long miserable journey yeah. and then you get the second menopause all over again fabulous <laughs> <laughs> at least I just do it once that's the one beauty of it I just want to do um quickly touch on talking about NHS medicine I predominantly do practice natural medicine with my clients and advise medication if they need it. Like you say, there is a place for medicine and some women do need it. And at certain times, then we do have to take allopathic yeah. medicine. And um, I wanted to talk quickly about breast cancer screening. You know my story. Um, I had a cyst on my breast that sat there. I knew it was a cyst. Um, I left it. And then, of course, we went through, you know, the pandemic. And I finally, as doctors started to open up, I went to the doctor. Uh, they tried to get me to have a telephone appointment. Of course, I had to push to get seen because I said, you can't look at this lump over the telephone. And I was seen within a week. I was, um, I don't, I didn't even tell you. I was so scared. I didn't tell anybody. Yeah, I went breast lost, yeah. cancer screening within a week. Yeah. I, um, I didn't want to have a mammogram when I got there because I knew it was just a cyst. I was there, I was scared stiff because straight away they said, yes, the um, the doctor, she felt it was just a cyst, but she wanted me to have breast cancer, the mammograms, the ultrasound. And I went for the, I went for the mammogram and then it came back and I'm sitting in the waiting room and then I get called back again because they found something else. And of course that fear comes into you. Thankfully for me, it was, as I thought, just a cyst. Um, I used something natural and within a week my cyst vanished. You would yeah. not know that I had a cyst because I did something naturally um, to yeah. get rid of it. But you obviously went through breast cancer uh, screening. Yes, a fluke mammogram. Yeah, you went for a mammogram. Is that how you found your problem or did you already know that you had a lump? 
no, I had no idea. And it was a complete shock to me. Uh, and if I hadn't have seen those lumps on the screen, I would never and felt it under my armpit. I would never have believed it. And it had it been left up to me because I was so busy at the time um, and I was going away for a month and my clinic was doing really well. I probably wouldn't have done anything about it or for about another two months. Uh, and it would have probably been a little bit too late then. Yeah. So mammograms are uh, and they were trialing 47 year olds in my area. Uh, so that's how I got because I'd had lumps previously uh, and um, that were fine. Uh, but obviously I'd, I'd screened, I'd flagged up and that's why I got called forward. And that's what saved my life. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's important to go and get your screening done, yeah. ladies. And actually, I'm surprised because I had heard horror stories about how painful it was. Um, I didn't think it was that bad. I, it was uncomfortable, which I'm quite sure they do move the machine yeah. around but it was uncomfortable position I had to be in but I didn't I, I don't have very big chest anyway I didn't find it particularly I, painful I was quite surprised because I'd heard all these women saying how awful it was exactly um and it you know I've only got little I've got even, even a little one now um but so that's that's fun every year when I have to go and get that one checked um but it, it's it's uncomfortable but it's it's five minutes of saving your life and yes we've heard bad things about mammograms they are looking at other other ways of finding breast cancer I've I've researched everything. My oncologist is very open with me. She told me that if they could use another treatment, she would be the first one to advocate it at the hospital. She's head of the oncology. Um, but there's not been enough screening around the world to bring in any other treatment. And mammogram is the only way at the moment. Plus, the radiation is very minimal because I did ask about that as well, because obviously I'm trying not to put toxins in my body. So why would I go back every year and have radiation? Uh, apparently there's more radiation in an airport scanner. Yeah. And then and that, was, that was my main concern was the radiation. Yeah. Um, and I did take, again, I took natural remedies afterwards to, help to clear that radiation. So, but that was my biggest fear. I said, why am I having radi you know, radiation when I knew it was just a cyst? It, it's it's horses for courses it is. do I have this or do I have that so yeah. you know uh it, it's you've got to weigh up the pros and cons but it's, it's all about damage limitation as well it's all about protecting yourself around the other stuff and combining uh eastern and western medicine together and natural medicine as well as scientific medicine and you know it, it, it's, it's it's there's a place for it and everyone will will go on and live long happy lives hopefully uh, just getting that balance right yeah okay so thank you lucy if any women or men are watching this and have got any concerns about cancer menopause um you know as a cancer survivor and you did say you've got a support group how can people get hold of you or find you if your website and everything Instagram. yeah they can find me at a very simple website called lucy how .co.uk. Uh, we're friends on Facebook. Feel free to uh, find me through Cat's Facebook. I'm on Healthy Body, Healthy Mind on Facebook or Lucy Howe. Okay, perfect. And just very quickly, I'm throwing this one at you. So one, one top tip as a cancer thriver, what would be your one top tip for women or men? That have been through cancer so as a cancer thriver what is your one top tip mindset mindset get your mind right to in the right space because then we can do everything else we can help you with your nutrition we can help you with your supplements we can help you with your exercise we can help you that and if you've got your mind right and you are in the right place mentally you will do everything else well if you're not, you won't. And then you've got a very, very uphill battle. So mindset is key all the way. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Lucy. And that's true for everything. For menopause, perimenopause, just life in general, it all comes down to your mindset. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us, Lucy. I will pop Lucy's um, links into the uh, description below. Thank you for watching and make sure you like and subscribe and come back to watch more Girl Chat.